Hi there, I'm down at Williamstown in Victoria, which the Sea Shepherd hopes is going to be their future home for their ships. And we're about to board the Bridget Bardo and the Steve Irwin. Captain Lockie McLean's going to take me aboard and he's going to tell us a little about what they do and also why they do it. Okay, so I'm lucky enough to be joined here today by Captain Lockie McLean, who has been out on the dangerous high seas, out there at the front line of the anti-whaling campaign. So Lockie, thank you very much for uh, joining us and showing Thanks us around the Bridget Bardo. Thank you for having us. Now tell me a little bit of the history first of all. How was the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society started? Basically, uh, our founder Paul Watson left mm -hmm. Greenpeace uh, in the late 70s, decided uh, he wanted to do more direct action and con concentrate on marine conservation. So he started up Sea Shepherd. And tell me, why is it so important if we lose a species? I mean, a lot of people might not realise that, you know, what's the, what's the difference if we lose a shark or a whale here and there, or if we lose a species? You know, does it really matter? Well, people don't realise, but uh, just to illustrate the sharks, for example, mm. 100 million sharks get finned each year. 90% um, of the sharks have been wiped out worldwide. Uh, this affects the food chain, it affects uh, our, our ecosystems, mm -hmm. and we really depend on the oceans to survive. Now tell yeah. me, that logo there, I don't think I would like to see that coming at me if I was in the middle of the ocean. Tell me, what is it meant to represent and is it meant to be a bit frightening? Well, yeah, the Dalai Lama describes it as, that, uh, describes it as uh, compassionate wrath. So basically, it's, uh, it's intimidating. Yes. Uh, we are a non-violent organization, mm -hmm. but we do use uh, direct action and we do sometimes use intimidation in order to uh, protect marine, uh, marine environments and marine species. I reckon it, it could be pretty risky out there. What are some of the dangers of being involved in the organization overall? Well, uh, the first one is the weather. Um, when we're down in Antarctica, we come across gales, ice, huge storms. Uh, sometimes this vessel in particular has a hard time navigating through those waters. Okay. Okay, we're up here. I'm with Lockie where he spends a heap of his time when he's out at sea. On the This is the flybridge that I'm in, correct? That's correct. And down there is the, the bridge. bridge. All right, I'm learning already. Now tell me, Lockie, we're on the Bridget Bardot. Where yeah. did she get her name from? Now, Brigitte Bardot got her name through uh, the actress herself, uh, mm -hmm. the French actress who donated the funds necessary to purchase the ship. Okay, exciting. Well, I'd like a ship named after me one day, hopefully. <laughs> Do you have a million dollars? <laughs> not quite, not yet. <laughs> Where does the Bridget Bardot go from here? Uh, Brigitte Bardot will be uh, conducting a campaign in the South Pacific to protect okay. uh, against illegal shark fitting operations. Okay. Yeah. And from there, she'll head to Antarctica next December. And when you're out at sea, what will the Bridget Bardot be doing well, out there? Um, in, in the first instance, will be she'll be patrolling, uh, seeking out illegal shark finning operations. Okay. Second okay. thing, she could be possibly bringing in illegal long lines, okay. setting sharks free. Yeah. Um, obviously, the crew will be taking lots of uh, video mm. footage, documenting these illegal activities, so that later on those vests can be prosecuted. All right, and, and who are the culprits? Who's doing this? Um, a lot of Asian nations. Mm -hmm. uh, shark fin soup is very popular in, in Asia, in Taiwan, mm. and China, and uh, they have uh, successfully been able to wipe out. 90% um, of the global shark population just by finning the sharks, throwing the bodies back in the water. Yep. Boats. Boats. Yeah, those yes. are the small boats over there. Okay. And yep. uh, there's three of them on deck, and this crane is used to put them in the water. Uh -huh. And uh, what we do with these boats is, uh, because the Steve Irwin's a bit slower than the Japanese harpoon right. ships, yes. we use these small boats to close in the gap yep. and uh, generally annoy and uh, deter the harpoon ships from whaling, basically. Okay. Yeah, very effective. They don't like it. No, they don't like it. Uh, we get right in front of them and we try to slow them down. If we can get the small boats in front of the bow of yes. the harpoon ship, yep. that will stop them from harpooning the whales. Okay. Japanese whalers down in Antarctica are on film. They know it. Um, so using using us, uh, you know, using our small boats will uh, usually stop them from from trying to uh, harpoon the, the whales. Yeah. So here we are in the kitchen where I'm told everything in here is vegan. So good to see that they're practicing what they preach. So Lockie, what a fantastic looking helicopter we've got here. How do you use that? Uh, the, so this is a Hughes 500. It's a, uh, an American helicopter. We use it uh, in Antarctica mostly to uh, spot the, the whaling fleet. Okay. So sometimes if we're not sure, we're looking at the radar screen, we think we might see a ship. We call the pilot and say, hey, would you mind going check that out? He flies over it. Oh, yes, it is a ship. So now we've seen what they do and how they do it and what it's like to be on board. You too, don't forget, can help out. Visit their website, seashepherd.org, to find out how you can either become a volunteer, but of course how you can also make a much needed donation. seashepherd.org.